Oh, okay, we're going to have a look at a Pioneer Tractor um, DDJ T1. Now, problem with the tactile switch not going on. Now, the guy brought me this the other day and said to me that um, he, his mate took it apart for him and I had a quick look. Uh, confirms that it is the switch that's at fault, which I'd already told him it was the switch that was uh, the problem. Um, he said it was full of dirt and gunk inside, so it's had a bit of a clean out, but he took it apart which I cringe at because I always do because if someone else has took it apart you don't know what they've done or anything so the first thing I'm going to do I'm just going to power it up and make sure that it all powers on um, and I've got his laptop as well which should have the software on so I'll just plug the, uh, the USB in and it's one of those uh, four dimensional um, USBs it takes four attempts to uh, plug it in uh, that doesn't go in there, that goes in the back of there. That goes into there. Like so. And we just had a flash of lights, things are lighting up. There is a lappy arm. And. I'll just drag a track into there. I'll spring that so you can see what's going on if you want. Um, so just drag a track into there and uh, drag a track, stick it in there. There we go. Now let's just move that out of the way. These play buttons and cue buttons should be flashing. Yeah, that works. And the play button works if you hit it hard and tap it hard and the other side, the other side's fine, no problems. So we know that all powers up so that's all good. That's uh, just one of my concerns when you get something that someone else has took apart. You don't know what, um, what they've done to it or if anything has happened to it or if they brought it to you because it's something's happened to it. I'm not saying that uh, he has or anything like that. It's just uh, peace of mind before I take anything apart. I like to know what state it's in before I take it apart. So that I know if it's in a worse state, it's me. Or if it's in a better state, I've done what I was supposed to do. Uh, so, right, never took one of these apart before. So I've uh, I had a quick look at the drawer in uh, last night. And it's quite a complicated uh, bit of kit to get apart. Apparently I need to move... Just check that there's nothing going to be damaged if I rest it on the on the knobs and things. No, it looks all all right. They're not. Uh, well, they are pushed down tight. I'm sure they'll be all right as long as I don't apply any pressure. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to remove these uh, legs by removing the two screws. And when I've removed these two legs, I'm just going to uh, remove all the other screws out of here. Okay, so we've removed all the screws now. Every single last one of them. And the cover lifts off, like so. And I'm just looking. If you can see this here on the board, you have to excuse the focus. Uh, my camera's shagged. Uh, we've had a few um, few problems this way for the last 12 months. We've had um, people dropping dead, machinery failing, one after another. But uh, yeah, shit happens. So anyway, uh, yeah. So just just an observation here. This corrosion on the um, on the base of this which would indicate to me that there possibly might have been a spillage on here at some point something corroded corrosive that's corroded the board a little bit uh, looking at the circuit board quick visual there uh, can't see anything that um, looks corroded or damaged on there so that all looks good so I don't think there's anything to worry about there on that side of things 
Right, so the next thing we want to do now, we need to get to this play button here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, start removing these motherboards. Now, looking at it, it looks like it's a bit of a nightmare of a job to do. So, got this board here first of all at the back, which is attached to this. So, I'm just going to whip these screws out the back here, hoping that this will lift, let, allow this board to lift away. Um, Depends. I know they've done it, but anyway, let's just uh, whip these screws out and we'll just have a look. Now remember as well, before you go inside one of these, make sure you've um, you've earthed yourself and you've got rid of any static, because um, there will be static sensitive parts in here. Um, you know, if you're, if you're taking it apart in your bedroom or something like that. Try not to keep walking across the carpet and then touching the uh, the boards and stuff because um, you might just find that you have a bit of a problem then. So I'll just remove them and them. And I'm hoping that's going to free that board up there. I'm not sure. Screw there. I suppose it's like anything, if you've not took something apart before, it's a bit trial and error ish. So, according to that, that should come off there, but there's something still holding it on. And that metal bracket goes all the way through there. Now, I wonder if it's those. Um, yeah, I'm going to take the uh, off the phono jacks at the back. Here. Great, long nice pliers are missing. On the back here, there's some phono jacks. I'm just going to unscrew the uh, the nuts off these, just to allow this to uh, to come away. I'm just having a look now because the guy did say to me he thinks there's a couple of screws missing out of it from inside from here from towards the back here but I can't actually see them at the moment but uh, we'll soon find out I guess check the camera still rolling it has a tendency to, uh, to turn off this camera like I was saying earlier um, my main computer that I use it's, it's on 24 hours a day seven days a week and that's finally given up I managed to keep it limping along leaping along What's happened is some of the um, some of the chips have started separating from the board, um, and you only have to tap it. If you hit too hard on the keyboard, it'll uh, it shuts everything off because it's just shit. It's old. It's in better days. So now the next thing here is is the wiring. Now you've got a choice here with the wiring. You can either just pull it apart and hope you remember where everything goes and make sure you plug everything back in the right places what I'm actually going to do I'm just going to get a, uh, a pen and I'm just going to number each each uh, plug with a um, with a number and I'm just going to write on here a number so we put one on there and I'm going to pull this plug out and I'm going to put a one on the plug so we now know that that goes there okay and then I'll just follow this one down which goes to here and I'm just going to put a number two on there and we'll unplug that and I'm just going to put a number two on there as well so we now know where those two go and I've got a third wire here which goes on here and I'm just going to write on here I'm just going to put a naught on there and with a bit of luck I'll just write a naught on there as well so we know that that goes there and that's the, the first board removed 
like so. Now I'm hoping that's in focus. I can't. It doesn't seem to be focusing either. When I turn my camera on, um, sometimes the battery will just be completely flat, even though it's been on charge all day. It's almost like there's a bit of a charging problem with it. Um, other times I'll be using it and it'll show full uh, full battery on the on the display. It'll show full battery on the display, but when it uh, I've only had it on 10 minutes and it'll just go flat. Um, now there's a problem with the focus. The uh, the auto focus zoom isn't moving. The motor mechanised bit on it isn't moving. When I turn it on, I have to um, I have to mess around with the uh, the zoom till I get it into focus, and then all of a sudden it'll start focusing. So yeah, so it's uh, like most things in this workshop, things are starting to uh, starting to die, and um, I think we're going to have to be uh, upgrading some stuff soon. So we'll. Uh, so there might be some some reviews coming soon of uh, of some equipment. Uh, all right, now I'm just going to uh, to one not one two we've done so far. So I'm just going to put a number three on here. A number three. And I'm just going to put a number three on this one, just so I know that that goes there. Move that one out of the way. Uh, three. I think we'll have to unplug this one as well. So I'm just going to put a four on there, and I'm just going to write a four on there. Four on there. So it's quite clean inside. He's uh, he did say he'd blown out. There's a bit of tobacco and stuff down there. Looks like a bit of ash. Um, yeah. So that's numbered, that's that one. Uh, what's that there? That's something to do with the buttons at the front. Might oh, come away. I think it will. So I'm just going to uh, keep unscrewing screws and removing stuff. Now remember to uh, to bear in mind when you're taking things apart. I hope my head wasn't in the way then. Uh, when you're taking things apart, that um, sometimes you have different length screws in different uh, different parts. Now. If that's the case, remember to mark where it came from, which part. Also, when you take these off, mind you, don't lose the uh, the felt covers on them. This just keeps the dust off the uh, off the switches, keeps the dust out. So when you put it back together, you want those in there. Um, ribbon cables. Where are we at now? We've got number four. It's going to go five, five. Five, so I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to pull that one out of there for now, and I think that I'll allow this main board to come off, which is the one that we want to be getting at, I believe. And there's quite a few screws in here, so uh, let's just start whipping these out, and hopefully we've managed to uh, remove everything we need to remove. See so, you now, I'm also looking at this board here. Now I don't know if this is uh, these have been marked previously to say the screws have been tightened or something else but if you look by each screw there's a little black mark by each one and I suspect that was um, that was done at manufacturer to say yeah we've tightened the screw so every time they put a screw in and tightened it down they've put a mark on it um, yeah and also another thing to just be aware of, you see where I've just took this that screw out, that screw out, and I took this one out and it's got a, uh, a line on there. That means that it's got a, a bracket on there to uh, hold your cable in. So just make sure that uh, you observe when you put things back together and make sure you put them back together in the right order. And remember again, check your screw lengths as you're unscrewing them and taking them out. Because if you have one that's longer, you want it to go back in that slot, not a different one. Because I have in the past, and I've known people in the past, and I'm going to admit that I've done it myself a couple of times. And after a couple of times of balls in summer up and causing yourself a headache and a nightmare to sort it out, uh, you tend not to do it again. Uh, but yeah, a couple of times I've uh, put screws back in that have been too long, not thinking, just thrown it all back together. And I've screwed through and damaged a board underneath, or damaged a trace on a board, or something like that. And it's a nightmare seriously so anyway that story is for another day let's concentrate on this one at the minute and see where we're going with this 
cuts out thousands and thousands of screws. You'd be better off with a uh, lucky screwy on this one. For what it is. For what it is. I'll just use this one. See, I'm a great believer. I don't. Um, I'm, I'm a great believer in using hand tools for, for screws on circuit boards and things like that, especially when you're putting them back in, um, because you can cross thread stuff, you can uh, over tighten stuff, and things like that. And if you've got a hand operated screwdriver, you uh, you sort of know how much tension you give it, how tight you've tightened it, etc. Whereas an electric screwdriver, sometimes you can just over tighten things, you can strip thread, you can damage stuff. You know, so I like to um, let's take that off there. I'll try and remember that goes back on there by putting it over the screws. Um, yeah, so I'm a great believer in using hand tools to uh, to tighten things down and and screw things back in. But if you wanted to, you can quite happily use uh, an electric screwdriver or something like that to uh, to whip all the screws out. Um, no problem whatsoever. Another screw there. Make sure. Yeah, see these marks here? It's not for that one, it could be for that one actually. That one, that one. So there's a mark there, but I can't see a screw. I'll see that. I don't know. I don't know what to mind. Oh, I see, that's that. Uh, now I've just spotted where these two screws that he mentioned are missing from. One there and one there. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to drop one of those screws back into there. There was one screw in that metal bracket that didn't need to come out or doesn't need to come out yet so I'll put that back into there um, but anyway now then with a bit of luck I'm hoping this is going to come away we've removed all the screws I've got a feeling we're going to have to flick it over and remove the dials and things so my reckoning is we get a plastic uh, spudger just, uh, just to uh, aid in the removal of knobs. Oh my god, they're tight. See, if we'd have been thinking on our feet, we'd have probably removed these at the beginning. Um, they're going to have to come out, I think. They're part of the, um, they're all part of the same circuit board, are they, mate? Yeah, I think they might be. Let's <coughs> <coughs> you know, get that. Some of these don't want to come off at all. Come on, you know you want to. She done glued that one on. I think he might have done, you know. There we go. So that's all of them out now. Well, this is where we probably find that this metal bracket on the back here hold it all in as well. So we're going to remove that screw again. I'm also going to remove that screw. And we'll sort of free Here now, there's something just catching where the tabs are by the looks of it. So it just goes steady here. There's one attached to it here. Well, it looks as though there's one attached here. So, yes, yeah, so there's one attached there. Which I'm sure I'll remember. Also that one there which is attached which I'm just going to mark. I'll probably see where it goes when it uh, 
when it goes. I think we've got to number five, haven't we? So I'm just going to put a five on there. I'm just going to write a five on here. Five, so we know. And we'll just flick this over, and lo and behold, that should be the Q button, or this place pause button. That's the Q button there. Shift button. See, it feels all right. It don't feel too bad at all, that. So anyway, so so far, that's how it all comes apart to get to that tactile switch. Got some bits of um, cardboard and stuff down there. Um, yeah. Right, okay, so next thing we need to do then, we just need to uh, have a look at this tactile switch, which is that one there. And it's only um, two connections. Two connections, and it's a tiny, tiny trace. Tiny, tiny trace. So we just got to be careful when we take that out. And they've actually bent the legs over, which um, is a right pain. So let me just move this out of the way. And I'll just put that over there out of the way for now. Just so all the buttons and stuff don't fall out. Uh, I was going to take it over to the soldering bench and solder it, but we'll solder it in situ where we are. If I've got enough, uh, got enough on soldering iron for you to see still, yeah. So just fire that up, and get that nice and warm. Get that nice and warm. Now, We'll trust the solder sucker out, so we can suck a bit of solder off. And I have no dirty comments in that box from you lot about sucking solder. Uh, right, now the other thing we need to do as well is find the tactile switches, because I had quite a few somewhere. Quite a few. And it also depends on, it also depends on tactile switch size and make and model. Now these are, um, yeah, they're the size. So these are four legs on these. Four legs? Yeah, four legs. We only need two legs, yeah? You need two legs, yeah? So we could, if we wanted to, use those. There's four legs, I don't want to use those. I want a two-legged one. Two-legged tactile switch. And the big ones, four legs. Four leg tactile switches. Okay, so we've managed to uh, get a tactile switch. Found one. It's about the same size, slightly different uh, make and model. It's a uh, a two-legged one, so I'm just going to put that to one side because the first thing we need to do is desolder this uh, like so. I'll just have a bit of solder and grab the old iron. Gonna start. So not organised today. So not organised. No water in my bloody water bottle for my iron. Oh. All good. It's all good. It's all good. Keep telling yourself it's all good and it'll be good. Right now then, let's check that's the one. Yep. That's the kitty there. So the first thing we need to do now is uh, desolder it. Now I'm just going to uh, ground myself again. Just because I'm going to be resting my hand on this board a little bit, like so. And the last thing I want to do now, apologies if you can't see what's happening. I'm just um, desoldering this uh, switch. 
So all I've done, I've just sucked uh, the solder away from the through hole. And then just bend the leg straight again. And voila! One tactile switch removed. Grab the new one. And stuffing through the hole like so. And I want something under there. I'm just going to stick that under there. What's that with them wires hanging off? I can hear you say. I'll tell you what that is. That's just a little, uh, a little thing for uh, measuring resistance on resistors quickly. Um, multimeters on there. I was actually looking at building a um, an ohm meter using an Arduino um, that would identify the resistance of a resistor. Um, it would then tell you the resistance and possibly display it on the screen. And then I came across a guy that had already done this using um, Lego figures. So I sort of went down that road for a little while, um, but I couldn't get a, an accurate uh, ohm reading on it. So I sort of gave up on that. Uh, well, I haven't gave up on it. I just sort of put it to the side because I had other stuff going on. Uh, but we might, we might come back to that. But anyway, yeah, this this is just for um, measuring resistors. All I do is I just get a, a multimeter. You could either clamp them on there or that would be attached to your uh, Arduino. And... Uh, Grab a resistor out of here, still in the pack. You just get the resistor, drop it over the two terminals like so, and it uh, reads the resistance on there for you. So you drop it on, got the resistance. Simple, easy, and effective. So anyway, that's that's that. That's just some of the shit that I've been working on. Um, so yeah, so that's that done. We've soldered that back up now. Tactile switch feels good. Can't feel any problems with that. Uh, no real way of testing that other than putting your meter on it and pushing it to see if it still works. Um, like I said, it feels all good, so I'm going to assume that that's good for now. And uh, we'll soon find out when we get it back in the machine. It's a shame, really, that you can't um, plug these boards in without putting all those screws back in. Well, I suppose I could, but what's the point? Yeah, I'm going to put it all back together and try it first. Where am I? No, I'm not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it back together, sort of, and try it. So first thing I need to do is that one needs to go back into there, like so. And then we need to try and get these all back in the right places, sitting flush with the switches, without. breaking anything like so so I'm just going to throw a couple of screws in here for now just so that I can um, see this working now the two screws you said he had at home which are missing which went down there I can see where they went now so I'm just going to drop that one in there on the metal bucket and I should have told them to bob them round shouldn't I I might have a couple actually that I could put in there temporarily in fact they look the same as the bottom the ones out the base so I could probably put those in and we wouldn't really have a problem with that so I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to bob the four corners in for now like so although I've got to put that board back in as well haven't I um, what it is I may as well just uh, throw all the screws back in I think now I'm just going to put these screws in see look at that changing my mind like a woman okay. now I can make, make several decisions within a second then and then still came up with the uh, the one I'd already uh, thought I was going to do so I'm just going to drop all these screws in here like this for the simple fact I'm just going to put um, this back end board back on so we can power it and this 
one managed to go in. Like so. Now, where's that board? Let me just see what uh, that goes to the front end, that board. So, where's the back end board? That's the back end board, isn't it? So, if that's in there now. That means that's all good. Yeah, all those screws are in place now. Which is a good thing. So we can just pop that on. Pop a screw into there. And I'm just going to grab one of these little short black ones from the back panel. And... So that's that all back on there. Should be another black screw somewhere. Not so okay. Definitely one of the small black ones. I definitely one of those and it's right okay, so let's start plugging things back in now and see if everything works. Like I said, I'm not uh, fussed, not, let's go to there, that one. That's one, one to one. Two to two, okay, I'll put five and five on there. Five and five, that'll confuse someone, won't they? Surprised you confused myself. That's number three down there. Uh, the old spudger. Now I hope you can see what I'm doing here. I can't really zoom in. Um, as I say, my camera's shagged. I'm just going to have to... Um, Start saving up for a new one, which probably ain't going to happen for a long time. Wants a screw in there as well, don't we? Oh boy, screw it up. That's it, that's that fucker in there. So yeah, so anyway, as I was saying earlier on about the uh, the manual, I think I mentioned about the manual, that I managed to download one. Uh, I found it quite easily online, the manual. So if, you, uh, if you're looking to take one of these apart, um, you shouldn't have a problem finding the manual or anything like that. There's this one here, isn't there? Yeah, there's... Right, you got a feeling that screw needs to come out of there. So that I can put that one into there. Now then we're not going to uh, remember what I said about the felt. Make sure you get your felt covers back on. Because you will get dust into the uh, unit. I mean if you, you, know, you can see down there. Uh, on the side of that switch there's already dust shit. And looks like bits of tobacco in here. Just uh, find the old brush. I'll just give that a quick... Uh, a quick brush out in there. Apart from that, it looks quite uh, quite tidy in here. A few doggers and stuff, but yeah, you expect that. Now then, it's going to bolt on there. That one into there. That wire goes into there. Number four. Right, so that is now. Everything is back on there now. Everything's connected up. So there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to power this and just make sure it all works. 
So before we go any further of putting any more screws and stuff back in, I'm just going to flip this over. Uh, I'm not forced, I'm just making sure there's nothing on my bench to short anything out. What's that there? A lump of green stuff just fell out of there. I can't imagine what that could be. Uh, right, okay, where are we at? that comes into there just need to find the power 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 what do I do with that here it is so one power lead put that into there make sure that switches off for a minute Okay, turn that on. Power is on. My battery light's flashing on the laptop for some reason. I haven't put the USB in yet. He says. What's this? It's a MacBook. Laptop's in, things have lit up. I've got a cue and a play. Oh, look at that. Q button stop working now. Don't know. I don't know if that's because it's not screwed down at the bottom, so I feel the board flexing underneath. Let's move that laptop out of the way just so that I can't. Um, Knock it on the floor. I don't think it'd be too impressive if I smashed his laptop as well. And I just want to put my finger on the circuit board underneath. And that's fine, yeah, that's working. He says. He fucking says. Yeah, that's working. It's just because the uh, the board underneath is not screwed down, and it's just where I push on it. It's flexing the board away from the uh, away from the button. Okay, so that's all good. So we'll shut that down. Okay, so we've got all them screws back in now. Um, I didn't think you'd need to watch me uh, putting all them screws in. They've all been screwed down, tightened up. Just got to uh, root all the cables and make sure that we've got them all in the right. Uh, the right places. See that I think we ought to root that underneath there. Like so. Put that looks a little bit uh, little bit neater and tidy there, doesn't it much? Yeah, so that's all the screws in, everything's back on, just need to put the uh, the base plate back on now. So again, this is just going to be um, a lot of screws, I'm just going to give this a brush off before I put it on, just in case there's anything, or any foreign bodies on it that could drop off onto the circuit board. There we go. And I'm surprised that there isn't actually a, uh, an earth tag going to this base. I know it's earth through the uh, through that connection there, and there, and there. So three connections, that's if these are earth now. But uh, just a big solid metal thing like that, you think it would have an earth, a separate earth running to it. Uh, so what we've got last, we've got to put this on. I've got these to put on at the back as well here for the... Uh, for the um, uh, photo jacks at the back, oh, drop those nuts on there. 
before you do anything else so I know it's done. Just like that. Just like that. I mean you could have. If I'd have been thinking. The other way is just to get a socket. Like that. You don't want to over tighten now, just do them hand tight, they're not going to come loose then once you've tightened them up. Uh, so yeah, so now it's just a case of getting all the screws back on here uh, and remembering which screw went where. And the beauty of these are they're all the same size, there is some shiny ones and some not so shiny ones. And I'm sort of uh, looking here at the two different types, I don't know if you can see here, I've got shiny and non-shiny. Um, a shiny ones go to these holes here which, which screw to a metal uh, metal plate. The non-shiny ones are going to the, uh, the plastic connectors that screw into a piece of plastic underneath there. Make sure I've got that the right way around. This is where we find now that we can't screw these into the metal bodied ones, but I'm sure that's how they came out. Yeah, that's how they came out. So, remember when you put it back together, we've got three different types here. We've got black. The four black ones go to the four legs that were on here. And the shiny ones go to the terminals that connect to metal, the non-shiny go to the plastic, plastic, and these are actually denoted with a diamond. If you look, there's a diamond symbol on each one of these. That actually means that it's that screw, the non-shiny screw in this case. Uh, and when you do take one apart, you'll see that there's uh, a difference in threads. But you don't want to put one of these as a self tappers in to the plastic threaded one, which is slightly fatter, and I've got a, a much thicker thread on it coarser thread which will just tear the plastic up um, you don't want to put those in the wrong way uh, it, it wouldn't really matter if you put the the other way around but if you put the plastic ones into the metal thing it just it'll probably be a loose fit anyway because they've already been uh, the threads have already been cut on there so yeah uh, and I'm just waffling and talking shit at the minute so don't listen to me as I said non shiny lesser pitch thread goes to the diamonds the shiny ones with the um, that's a dual one so why is that there so hang on and a crawl so that's a metal body metal body metal body uh, shiny ones goes to the um, he says So that's all back together, screws are in, we just got to put two in there when, when he uh, when he gets it back. Um, I'm not going to put the uh, switches and stuff on yet, I'm just going to uh, power it all up again. Power it all up, so we can just make sure that it all works. I should really plug a, a jack in the back as well, so we've got some audio coming out. Um, where can I plug that into? I don't think I've got a. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, 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 I've got a, a cable for it, handy. Damn. Okay, no worries. We're just going to um, turn it on. Power on. Everything lights up, as you can see. And we hit the Q button, that's working. It's all moving along on the screen. I don't know if you can see, I'll just give you this here. We hit the Q button, see that the tracks all start moving because it's queuing it up. And then if I hit the play button, that's all playing. So I'm going to call that uh, done and working. So that's how you uh, you replace the, uh, the pause play button on a Pioneer Tractor DDJ T1 um, controller or Mic DJ controller, I think they call this. Uh, so yeah, so if you like my videos, don't forget to hit that like button. 
and if you hit that subscribe button you'll get updates as and when we put new videos up so thanks for watching we'll see you soon